Hi everyone, this is Pierrick from P2 Design. In this new series, I will show you my world pipeline to create stylized and painted character from start to finish through several commented time lapse. This is based on a concept of spoon for our game Noara. Let's get started. <laughs> Before we start though, I would like to let you know that beyond being a video game, Noara is a whole universe and a big project and we're preparing the launch of our very first novel of the Noara universe. So I'll let you know how you can find it as soon as it's available. For this character, I had what we called a turn, so it's just like the concept put as a blueprint in a way. So I will use uh, the background image to set it in Blender uh, by aligning the front view and the side view with the different pieces of this turn artwork. In the background image tab, you will find the different option to position, scale, rotate and set up the view angle for your picture. My global workflow for this character was to create a base mesh using poly modeling, which I haven't been using for years now, and then go into sculpting to uh, shape the character and sculpt all the details. I will then have to make the retopology of the character with a budget of 5000 triangles, something like this, and uh, uh, making sure that I won't go over 10,000 triangles. So I've initially started with a cube trying to loop cut it, but it wasn't something I was comfortable with. So I prefer to start like with one uh, vertex and start to extrude it following the shape of the mouth. Then it's a matter of uh, positioning each vertex based on each view front and side. The concept art may not perfectly fit uh, each view but then you have to make some guess what to uh, create nice shapes. So I'm trying to make sure that I don't go too high poly at the beginning uh, extruding as less vertices as possible because the more vertices I will make the harder I will the harder it will be to create a nice base shape. I had to consider that the mouth will be rigged so that our character will be able to open it and close it so I had to make sure that it was separated and that I could open it before starting sculpting. The eyes won't be uh, rigged in a way, there won't be any eyelashes, so I don't have to consider it. Uh, the eye will be rigged, but uh, with uh, some specificities. So even if the base mesh is, will be quite raw, I try to follow some loops of the face. This is not something super important because I will uh, dy dynamesh it later on or dintopo it wherever you use uh, ZBrush or Blender, but uh, it's always better. Even for your modeling and just creating a nice base mesh, if you can more or less follow a good topology, that's fine, but I'm not focusing on it. I won't be using this for animation, so it's not important, but for me it's easier to create a correct base mesh using a quite good topology, let's say. I will now speed up the video ahead time because there is nothing much to say about it. I've mainly been using this uh, poly modeling extruding stuff along the way. Uh, I struggled a bit with the inside of the mouse because it was hard to see what I was doing but it's pretty like a straightforward process so there is uh, really nothing much to say about it.
once I'm done with this poly modeling, I will apply all my modifiers. Here it's the mirror modifier. And I will just uh, export this mesh as an OBG to be able to work inside ZBrush. Because uh, I feel more and more comfortable sculpting with ZBrush. And honestly, a specialized software like this is way more powerful and like way more handy than using a Blender sculpting tools. Blender sculpting tools are very good. For me, ZBrush is really more powerful for sure. Now working in ZBrush, I have uh, imported my OBG files. I separated the fin from the body so that it's easier for me to shape the body. I will start like using uh, the multi-resolution modifier in Blender by just subdividing uh, my base mesh and inserting the made landmarks. So I'm not still super experienced with sculpting because I don't do this every day, but I have uh, a lot of references of anatomy and I'm trying to uh, put the landmarks because even if it's a stylus character having a good anatomy or a believable anatomy will help you uh, getting a correct shape for your character. So I'm trying to land the main uh, muscle shapes and main bone shapes along the way. So it can be more extreme than what uh, the character will be in the end. It's just a guide for me because I'm not really good with anatomy and stuff like this. So I'm just putting landmarks that help me, help me reading the character and help me uh, seeing if the proportions are okay, if the, uh, the curvature of the back is okay and stuff like this. So I sometimes layer um, some stroke of clay as if it was muscle fibers or here are defining the rib cage and sometimes I will use more a carving brush to uh, draw the muscle shape so they won't have a shape but I will see uh, the limits and um, the area where the muscle like the biceps here should be sculpted and I've made some mistakes so one of the most important and most incredible thing uh, I've faced lately is that I have the chance to work with Spoon, uh, our concept artist, and I can show him my whip along the way. And as he's very good with anatomy, he always spots uh, the different problems. So it was not the case here, but uh, for example, I've made a mistake uh, that we will see maybe later, uh, sculpting the um, the torso muscles uh the pecs because i've linked them on the arm while they should be linked inside the arm going upon the biceps but for the time being i'm still just uh, layering some a rough shape very exaggerated and contrasted shape and i will be able to smooth them out later on so if you don't have the chance to work with other skilled artists or people that are more specialized than you, don't hesitate to post your whip on forums, on Twitter or stuff like that and ask for feedback. Um, it may sound like something that everybody says, but it's very true. Uh, they will help you and I feel like the Blender community, especially on Blender artists, for example, is really helpful. So. You should always post your whip if you don't feel comfortable and even if you feel comfortable with what you are doing, you don't know what kind of feedback you could have and they may uh, pull your work uh, and make it way better. So here you can see I'm uh, inserting uh, the pegs as I should not insert them. They should go just beneath uh, the shoulder uh, muscles 
and uh, upon the biceps. I sometimes forget to watch my uh, anatomy references, so I make mistakes. So um, it's so important uh, to watch. I mean, like spend more time watching references than uh, currently sculpting. Because if you like sculpt for one minute straight ahead without looking at your reference, you will sure make mistakes unless that you are super experienced. But uh, in my case, <laughs> I feel like I need to learn anatomy more, for sure. Here I'm making uh, uh, something that could be interesting for you. Uh, when you sculpt the arm, you should slightly offset the hand so that you don't have this uh, tube shape, but you break um, the end with the arm. It's something pretty subtle on the human body to uh, see because of the flesh, etc. But if you don't do this, like I'm doing here, uh, it won't look correct or at least you will kind of lose a rhythm inside your um, sculpt shape. So I'm just slightly offsetting the end inward by masking it and moving it so you can absolutely do this directly in Blender. Then I will roughly shape the forearm muscle, which is uh, quite complicated still for me, especially when it comes to the elbow and those connections, because they are pretty complex. There are not that much muscles going down the hand, but uh, they have very specific way to insert or cover parts of the forearm, and that's. Uh, always super tricky. So I know, I, I, I know, especially that uh, this is a difficult part for me. So this is generally something where I spend a lot of time uh, studying uh, references like Super uh, Muscle Man, or I have some uh, anatomy references and statues on my uh, desktop uh, I can use. Uh, and I will still make mistakes. I will add a muscle that doesn't even exist on my character. So that's it. Another little mistakes I've made or a bad choice, let's say, is that uh, I should have put some uh, loops on my fingers because when you see them here they look very round and flat and it's a bit of a pain to reshape them directly in ZBrush while if I add some loops I will have more squared finger which I tend to have uh, stylized wise and also shape wise it's better to make square fingers I believe than uh, tube shaped fingers like sausages that's not looking good and it's pretty hard then to recover a good shape
So now that I feel like I have more or less good landmarks, I will see, switch to Dynamesh. I will Dynamesh my uh, character, meaning that it's like the Din Topo in Blender. Um, your mesh will be kind of recalculated and it will uh, blend and weld all the different pieces in one. So the fingers are now attached to the character and I will be able to sculpt them. So for me, it's time to correct a bit the shape and add some details and some and polish my surfaces. So there are still mistakes like I haven't corrected the shoulder and you can see here that there is a weird pit between the shoulder and the pecs. And so I didn't figure it out uh, before I show it to our concept artist and it point out hey you have some anatomical troubles here you should correct this and uh, this is where it's super cool to work with this kind of guy that are super, super good, let's be honest. <laughs> I will now slightly speed up the video because there is not that much comment I will have to add to uh, this workflow. Just enjoy it and uh, like the video and subscribe and all those kind of stuff that will be really helpful. Thank you.